When we use the frame in method of a geometry proxy, SwiftUI will calculate the view's current position in the coordinate space we asked for. So global or local or even a custom namespace if needed. Now, as the view moves around on the screen, these values will automatically update. So this geometry proxy always stays updated without us worrying about it and in real time. Now, previously, we used a drag gesture. As we dragged views around the screen, we read the offset width and height from the drag to manipulate properties like making it fade away or change color, whatever you want to do. However, with Geometry Reader, we can actually grab values from a view's environment dynamically, feeding in its absolute or relative position into any modifiers we want in any sorts of ways. Even better, you can nest Geometry readers, if you need to, have many of them on the screen. So you can have one for a higher up view and one for a lower down view to get more control. Now to try out some effects with Geometry Reader, we're going to create a spinning helix effect by having 50 views in a simple scroll view and then give them a nice infinite maximum width so they fill up all the available width, as we'll use a, uh, their Y position to create a rotation 3D effect so they spin around depending on where they are vertically. So we'll start off by adding some colors to our content view so it stands out more clearly. I'll say colors is an array of color equal to, and I'm going to set in here, let's do red, green, blue, orange, uh, pink, purple, purple, and yellow. So a bunch of built in colors. And then our body down here, I'll say the scroll view with uh, for each zero through 50, uh, 250, sorry, inside it, index in like that. Then make our geometry reader once for each view inside there with a proxy coming in. I'll do a text saying our row number is index. So it'll be row zero, row one, row two, and so forth in a font of title with a frame max width of infinity and a background using our colors array of our index modulus by seven or so. That's how many colors we have right now. I'll give a whole geometry reader an exact frame height of 40. Remember, they'll just adjust their size automatically based on available screen space. So give an exact frame is a good idea. Anyway, let's run it back. And I won't do anything special just yet because we aren't using the proxy just yet. I can scroll around. There's a bunch of views here, which is fine. To make our uh, sort of spinning helix effect, we're going to apply a rotation 3D modifier below the background color here. So I'll say rotation 3D effect. The degrees will be our proxies frame in the global namespace. And that'll give us back uh, the whole frame. We can now read from that just the min y. So the top edge of our view. I don't want the full min y, I just want one fifth of it. So I won't spin too fast, just spin, you know, one at one degree for every five points of movement. And our axis will be, and let's do x, zero, y, one, z, zero. So we're skewering it through the y axis, like vertically down the way. So it'll spin like this, as if it was skewered through uh, the y direction. And now we run it back, we should see all our views spinning around like this, boom. And they'll update dynamically as it moves around and it's really nice sort of spinning helix effect like that. So it works really, really well. The view at the top, very top like there, approximately the very top view row zero now, like there or so, uh, they have zero rotation because there, min y globally will be zero, top of the screen. So one fifth of zero is still zero, so they have zero rotation. Whereas we get further down the screen, this one at the bottom is basically rotated 180 degrees, right the way around, because it's so far down the bottom of the screen. That's a neat effect, but it's a bit problematic because the views only actually reach their natural orientation at the very top of the screen. Uh, that makes it rather hard to read. To fix this, we can apply a more complex rotation 3D effect. They'll subtract half the height of our screen. So if you imagine that you are, uh, for example's sake, the screen was 100 points high. Uh, that's the size of the screen, 100 points high. 
and our view is currently at 50, so halfway down the screen. If we subtract half the height, 50, we'll get a y of 0, which means views in the middle will be at 0, and views above will be negative, and views above below will be positive. So we want to try and get our views in the middle to be in natural orientation, the ones below and above to be uh, different. To do this requires a second geometry reader, so we can read the, the height of the main view. So around our scroll view, I'll say there's another geometry reader with a full view proxy coming in. Push the entire code inside. We haven't got a size as one because we just want the whole space by default, that's fine. The 3D effect this time will be, yes, give me our min y, that bit hasn't changed, but we want to subtract from that here, minus our full view, full view, dot size, dot height, divided by two, like, oops, like this, boom. So give me my Y position, take away half the available space, and divide the resulting angle by five. And now, with that in place, the view should reach a natural orientation, boom, like row seven here, right in the center. And the other ones above and below now spin away. So as you can see, having multiple geometry readers can be really, really helpful for getting different levels of view hierarchy. This outer one here reads all the available screen space, and the inner one reads the current screen space for this internal single uh, height 40 row. So it's really neat. We can actually use a very similar technique to make a cover flow uh, scrolling technique. And this is old school iPhone slash Mac OS or even iPod touch territory um, where you'd sort of swipe albums through from the side to look at your album cover and tap on one to flip it over to see his track listing. So we'll keep our uh, array of colors. It doesn't really matter. It's irrelevant at this point. Uh, and then I'll rip out all this code in the body and say that we have a scroll view this time it'll be horizontal, and I'm going to do shows indicators as false um, because we don't need them anymore. We'll then make a H stack with no spacing inside, so it's edge to edge inside there. And then do for each, I'll do 1 to 20 with uh, our number coming in here. Then have a, a reader for every one of those items. Then do a text with number, oops, number, that number, like before. I get a nice large title font so you can see it with a bit of padding, oops, padding, and a background of dot red. Now we apply our cover flow effect. We'll say rotation 3D effect. This will be degrees, and this time the mathematics we're going to use is I want to have a minus of our geo dot frame in the global namespace. But this time I'm going horizontally, so don't read the Y use min x like that so our uh, proxies frame in the global space namespace give me the left edge the minimum x value of it here that should be num in sorry there we go num uh, that the x value from that and again i'm going to give me only a fraction of the value so i'll just do divide by eight don't spin around wildly but spin around much more gently the axis this time will be again so x0, y1 are skewering through the top to bottom, and then z0, and then give this thing a frame for our text. And I'll use a width 200, height 200. And I'll apply the same frame to the reader itself. So don't grow to fill all the available space, stick to the sort of square space like that. And now if I press Command R again, we should see a very simple cover flow style effect. So I can swipe through these things like that to see my uh, collection of albums <laughs> in my iTunes library. That's proper old school stuff. So it's really, really nice. And there are so many interesting and creative ways to make special effects with these geometry readers. I hope you can take time to experiment a little bit.